Hello everyone. We'll give just a couple more minutes before I get started with this webinar, but thank you so much for joining. I see people trickling in by the second, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I'll give everyone just two more minutes and then we'll get started. And remember to think about some questions that you might have towards the end, because there will be a QA. and a um, We have about 45 minutes today, 30 minutes of me talking and uh, 15 minutes for your questions. So excited to dive in and hopefully we can all learn something today. So yeah, just giving everyone one more minute and then I'll get started. I'm dialing in from London, by the way, things are getting pretty cold. It was snowing this morning and, uh, <laughs> and dark, so we're heading into the season. But I'm, I'm Norwegian, so I'm, I'm used to this. This is, this is no biggie for me. Um, all right, looks like we're getting more and more people. Just going to give it a few more seconds and then we'll start. All right, I'll get started um, officially now. Uh, so everyone else is coming in. There will be a full recording of this that you will have access to, to get the full picture should you join in later. But either way, whatever you're calling from today, I'm so happy that you could be here. Um, we're gonna go through this webinar that we've dubbed the Segmentation Blueprint. And I'm your host. My name is Håkon Birklan. I'm an Enterprise Customer Success Manager here at OneSignal which means that I get to work with the front, front line of our customers who are innovating in the space and really happy to welcome you all here today. And I wanted to start out with a quick question. I want you to think about when was the last time you picked up your phone and actively used an app that you downloaded months ago? Now, I also want you to think of all the other apps on your phone that you've either muted or completely forgotten about. What makes the difference? And why do we stay loyal to some apps while others disappear in the background? This is exactly what we're here to tackle today, whether you're building a fitness app, a gaming app, e-commerce app, retaining users is important for everyone. And it's more challenging as the market gets increasingly flooded with more and more apps. But the good news is that it really doesn't take that much to make a major difference. And the goal of this webinar is to show some strate strategies and actionable steps that can help you stand out in a crowded landscape and show that with the right approaches and tools, you can build personalized long-term relationships that drive engagement and ROI. So for the agenda for today, um, we'll first discuss the importance of, person of personalization and why it's so critical. And we'll spend a little bit of time understanding the user journey providing you with practical examples to map out how and where you can engage with users most effectively. And then we'll dive into segmenting your audience, what segmentation is, how it works, and we'll also look at some real world examples to show you how others are applying these concepts successfully. Finally, we'll wrap things up with a few words on multi-channel strategy, the launch of those, some key takeaways, and there'll be time for Q and A at the end. Hope that sounds good for everyone listening in. And to start, I just wanted to zoom out a little bit because today there are over 5 million apps available across app stores. And I don't know if you know this, but the average smartphone user in the US has between 80 to 120 apps installed on their phone. So there's a lot of competition and it's not enough just to have a functional app that delivers uh, on their promises and services, you also need to stand out by offering an experience in addition to this that is both relevant and personalized. If not, you risk being forgotten about or worse, just muted or uninstalled. But you don't even have to take my word for it. One of the key reasons why retention matters so much is overwhelmingly because customer acquisition is expensive. The average mobile app 
company spends anywhere from one to four US dollars per install. And in industries like gaming, fintech, and e-commerce, cost per install can be anywhere from five to 10 US dollars. And then not, let's not forget about um, how much it costs to acquire a new in-app purchase. Or even if you have a subscription model, it can be anywhere from $50 to 200 USD per user. But retention, on the other hand, is much more profitable. Um, studies fact show that it can be up to five to seven times cheaper than acquiring a new user, which is exactly why keeping users engaged beyond the download is essential. Um, now let's take this home a little bit. So when you take it, think about your own phone, every time you receive a notification, it's a request for your attention. And if the message feels relevant or irrelevant, sorry, or intrusive, what well, you do? You simply ignore it, or worse, you turn off not you turn off notification or uninstall the app entirely. That's why the legacy sort of spray and pray messaging strategy isn't just ineffective. In fact, it can erode trust on mass and risk pushing users away. Well, pun intended on that one, by the way. <laughs> So, so what's the solution to all this? It's personalization. And you'd be surprised by how easy it is to make a big difference here. So how do you personalize messaging? It may sound simple, but it's, it's, there are some layers to this, and that's what I want to explain first. So it all starts with trying to understand what your users need. What are your users' preferences? What are their key milestones? And there's a lot showing on your screen right now, which is where we provided a QR code on the top right. So if you want to scan that and get access to this template, you absolutely can, because I wanted to dive into this a little bit, because it all starts by just understanding the user journey. And I want to use this fitness app as an example to make it concrete. Imagine someone named Tom, uh, he, he realized you know, that he wants to reduce a little bit of belly fat, and he searches for a fitness app and downloads one that looks promising. Um, Tom then creates his profile at the onboarding stage. He sets some personal goals and explores the features of the app. Next stage is the engagement stage where he starts his first workout session. He starts tracking his progress and then he completes his first workout and he receives a message congratulating him on and suggests a tailored plan for next step. So at every stage of Tom's journey, there are key touch points where you can engage with him. There's the onboarding stage. Where you can give him that, those personalized tips to help him set up his profile. There's the engagement stage. You can send reminders to nudge him to complete his first workout. And after reaching a milestone, you can celebrate his achievements or award um, or with a reward or a motivational message to keep on going. So mapping this journey helps you identify all these opportunities that you have to deliver the right message at the right time. So here's, here's an example of a member being welcomed to the new club. And there's an in-app message or a push notification there or an email to, to recognize them at the right point in their journey. So once you have a map, of all the different stages of the user journey and their milestones with you and your service, you can leverage um, segmentation to time a message based on their behavior and preferences and the different stages in their life cycle with you. So in this example here, you might segment a new user who's only spent their first one, or five, one to five days in the app post onboarding where there's a couple of goals associated with that and, and what is the challenge? Not yet bought into daily app usage or familiar with all the features. So you wanna help them start building a habit. And with more experienced users who you've, you've clearly picked up has um, used the app more and more, just creating motivation for them to, to, to get even deeper into the app, make, make purchases for paid features, et cetera. Now, Let's, how, how do you do this? How do you take all these uh, data? 
pieces and hone in on targeting these people? Well, one signal makes it really easy to create segments based on filters. We have a lot of things that are out of the box, basically pre-configured options that helps in very common use cases, such as, you know, how recently they've interacted with the app or what platform they're using, like iOS and Android. Uh, and then there are the different lifecycle stages of first time users or dormant users or more frequent users. And you can use the filters we provide out of the box by integrating our SDK to slice and dice and create a segment without any additional customization or, or integrations. And some of the more practical examples that you can use today is creating an onboarding journey based on users who've just signed up but haven't completed their onboarding, sending them friendly tips and reminders of how to guide them through their process. You have retention campaigns as well. So based on how many sessions or how long it's been since the last session um, or a user has opened the app, you can automatically target those users with using push notifications or any channel of your choice. And you obviously have promotional campaigns who, if you have a super user who uses the app, say 10 times or, or more in a week, you may want to send them a particular campaign to, to, encourage, to encourage more uh, purchase behavior. So these are examples of things you can do out of the box with one signal. Um, and we see that if you're, if you haven't segmented before, it makes a huge difference on the engagement rate compared to if you, if you don't. Now, if you want to take things a step further, there's a concept called data tags that you can basically collect more custom information on your users automatically. This consists of a key value pair. So an example of this can be a membership status being true or false, or whether they've interacted with a particular part of the app. You could apply that user tag to understand which categories they're interested in your app, how often they visit, etc. And we have a whole different webinar available if you search on YouTube or in our research page on data tags that goes a little bit deeper into that which I won't talk more about today, but the beauty of data tag is that it's, it's dynamic. So as users interact with your app, tags get updated in real time, meaning your segments will be real time. And so will your messages be and be increasingly re relevant to your users. I wanted to show you an example of a uh, journey in action with one of my customers actually. Um, so in this case, there's, it's a health insurance brand, um, and they've captured data tags on a user where they want to um, increase their nut consumption. So they want to eat more nuts in their diet to become healthier. And this is a very specific goal that's been set. And this customer has set up a, a segment of all these users who selected this goal for themselves and have specifically curated and targeted messages for that user using one signal journeys. And um, this really helps, you know, encourage a particular behavior uh, based off of a very personalized goal that they've captured in a data tag. And then you can measure the performance of that um, and reiterate your strategy accordingly. Um, another example that I want to mention is leveraging demo uh, demographic data. So this is something you get out of the box with one signal. It can be things like location, device type, or preferences that are commonly used in, in segmentation that helps you send those relevant and timely offers. And for a fitness app, democratic, <laughs> demographic data might include things like age, fitness goals. Uh, but for a company like Shake Shack, who offers different products at different locations all around the globe, they use democratic demographic data to hone in on where the user is at that exact moment and provide them personalized regional uh, recommendations based off of where they are, um, which is something that you get out of the box using one signal. I also want to show you another example of a customer call TapTap. -tap. They're a 
money transfer app. And they focus on high risk users who've signed up but haven't made their first transfer yet. So they can send a personalized message addressing hesitations like, we notice you haven't sent your first, your first transfer yet and here's how to get started. And the result of this for them is that it's helped users move through their entire their, their initial friction point and drove much higher conversions because you were there at the right time um, informing them about that friction point and as a result was able to drive much higher conversions, kind of as I just said. <laughs> yeah, this is another example where you can continue your messaging using one signal journeys to um, target them using different channels as well, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Um, another example that I want to touch on is Bitcoin.com. So you all are probably familiar with Bitcoin and probably got some FOMO for not investing in it. <laughs> Recently, if you're following the financial market, well, it all depends on when you guys are watching this, I suppose. But for us live, uh, Bitcoin is up right now. Anyway, that's not that's not the point of this. I'm not a financial advisor, by the way. But uh, Bitcoin.com for those who don't know, is a crypto wallet and they use segmentation to target users at specific stages in their journey. Um, and I've seen their user map, it's super impressive. And they've run these automated engagement campaigns where you can send automatic price alerts and swap confirmations on different crypto swaps. Um, and when you nudge those users who, who hasn't done a transaction yet, but may want to, the result is that you can significantly in, increase the likelihood of, of more transactions and completed swaps um, and overall revenue. And they also use in-app messaging to aid users in their onboarding, which really helps them get informed for new users to set up their two-factor authentication, which really reduces the overhead internally of managing this messaging, because one signal is able to capture that user information through segments and automate that sending at the right time. Next up, I wanted to quickly touch on the multi-channel advantage. So, Reaching users across multiple channels is critical because not only a user, every, users respond to the different types of messages and have access to different things at different times during the day. So it's not about blasting users from multiple different angles, but it's just understanding the preference of the user and being available where they prefer. So some might prefer a quick push notification while others are more likely to act on receiving an email or an SMS. And the format is different. The readability is different. Push is a little bit more instant, while email, you can present a lot more information. So it's all about understanding your purpose and communicate the, the intent accordingly. So we, in OneSignal, we found that in 2023, so last year, there was a 140% increase in apps executing on multi-channel strategy. And this is because we see an increase in engagement by about 36% um, if you're able to target a customer on, on multiple channels. So it's about trying to find the right mix for seamless and personalized experiences. I want to use Zenny here as an example. So Zenny, a very big um, sunglass and, and glasses brand in the US. Uh, they use one signal for and are different channels for different purposes, uh, depending on uh, depending on the, the message. So for push notifications, they promote their spring sale with discounts to encourage that immediate action. And then email, they can follow up with that with users who have left something in their cart and provide a little bit more of a visual and clear reminder to complete their purchase. And in-app messaging, they can use that to educate users on a brand new product announcement, such as these anti-UV glasses, I think it is, um, while users are actively browsing for something that they're, that they're looking for. 
So by combining all these channels, Zenny is able to ensure that their messages stay relevant without overwhelming the user. And we're getting to a slide here, which is very, very important, especially if you're starting out, because as a marketer, your campaigns and products will continue to change and evolve, and so will your users. So as you learn more about your audience, your segmentation will also get better over time, and so will the resonance of your messaging. So something I encourage all my customers to do is to try to keep track um maybe in your own little private document or or a public one if you're a larger marketing team to see how messages perform and try to understand what worked here and what didn't and try to eventually build out the the needs and pain points that you're solving for and how your messages uh, fit into that mold because every every marketing team and every service is is fairly unique which is why it's super important to keep track of the things that works and the things that don't and continue to re to evolve and adapt on that as your as your strategy evolves. So for example, um, you may want to try to use a reward promotion for first time purchases, but that same strategy and message may not be as effective for more frequent shoppers or users who leave an item in their shopping cart maybe they're more likely convert with like a 10% offer than those who like an item or just favorite an item. So keeping a close eye on open rates um, is, is really important and click through rates and those conversion rates to find out how your messaging strategy uh, performs. Now that we've covered a lot of the importance of personalization, how to map your user journey and how to create meaningful segments, segmentation strategies, you might still be wondering, okay, but where do I start? And the answer is it really depends because just like your users, your journey with segmentation is um, rather personal because it depends on how, what you've already done, what systems you have in place and what matters the most is just taking the first step. So if you're super advanced and you already use data tags, you already use journeys, et cetera. Um, I, I like to use an uh, analogy that some of you might relate to. It's kind of like going to the gym where if you haven't gone to the gym before, you might want to do some very basic exercises to begin with, some basic segmentations, et cetera. And it might seem simple, but actually your the response and the output that you get from it in terms of performance and results is much, much higher compared to someone who's already done this for a while. And you might not even know how to lift those heavy weights just yet because you kind of had to earn that, uh, that layer of advanced segmentation and journeys, et cetera, in order to, you know, to start doing that. Because more is not always, does not always equal better, uh, which is, uh, you know, a pitfall that I find many customers fall into very easily. Um, and the same goes for, for segmentation. So if you start to focus on the basic, it might seem simple, but the results you're seeing will <laughs> mostly shock a lot of my customers. And if you want to be more advanced, it's all about optimizing for those incremental gains and refining your approach to, to keep improving. So the most important thing is to start somewhere and always put, uh, you know, um, always, always put something in is much better than nothing at all. So the key takeaways that we talked about today is that it's so important to get ahead of your competition and it all starts by mapping out your user journey. And then you can segment users based on those different life cycle stages that you've identified as, as crucial. Um, different ways of targeting users and keeping them engaged and retaining them could be to recognize engagement milestones, leverage that demographic data that you have available, or identify users who's at high risk of churn. Those might be some of the areas in your life cycle that you wanna focus on to keep things personalized. 
And then it's really important to be mindful about how your segmentation strategy fit with the omnichannel approach. Like where does it make sense to use a more of an immediate push? Where does it make sense to have more information for things like email or, or even SMS? And then lastly, start small, test and optimize as you go. And that's, that's where I'll leave things. I realize we have time for questions right now, and I'll be more than happy to spend the rest of your time uh, tackling those. I'm going to have a look in our questions area right now. So if you have anything, please, please let me know. Right, so we have a question here where it says, I noticed some of the examples said EN for English when setting up journeys and having different countries' languages. How often do you have to recreate that journey for specific regional language segments? It's a good question. So in this case, in this example, it is um, helpful to know in the segment itself that you base the journey on, just what what language this particular user is 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 speaking about. So, um, segmenting users based on language is is fairly common. So, whenever you set up a journey, it's all about how you've defined your segments uh, to begin with. And if you have a multi language audience, having a clear separation and differentiation is is very important um, so and it's very easy to if you have multiple language journeys to simply duplicate that journey you would have to do the translations themselves uh, for each of the messages but in terms of steps and timings and all those things you can easily duplicate the structure of a journey and simply just slot in the next segment for for the other language Hope that makes sense. So we got another question here. For emails, notifications, in-app messaging is all done within one signal, or is it just a journey map to connect those channels? Great question. So you can do everything. You can do all these channels within one signal. So. The journey example, for those who don't know what a journey is, essentially is an orchestration tool. So it's excellent for those omni-channel use cases where you want to say you have an onboarding journey in place for those new users. You may want to send them an email to start things off and then uh, send a push notification a little bit later on. Um, and, and include in-app messages to educate a user as soon as they open the app on, hey, here's, here's how you signed up, here's how you navigate in the app, et cetera. So in one signal, you can, sell, you can send individual messages through one single email, one notification, schedule a single in-app message all within the dashboard. But you can sort of bring all of those things together for these automated messaging journeys uh, using journeys. Uh, so I hope that helps answer your question. Let's see if there's any more questions here today. What are some creative use cases you've seen for multi-step journeys? That's a really good question. Let me think. So I think the um, one of the main things to think about is Hey, if a user is not responsive on this particular channel, um, let's try different ones. So if you want to engage a user or, or onboarding uh, is, is one great example here. If you want to, it often starts with an email, but many, many people don't respond on their email or they're not, they're not interested in that. But the whole beauty of, of journeys is that it doesn't really matter um, which user um, resonates with what, because different users will fall into the same steps as all the others before. It just might be that some of them resonate more with an email, 
some of them might resonate more with a push to get them to uh, to get them to complete a profile, for example, or um, or anything similar. And you will be able to basically guide them through and have them exit at any point as soon as they've hit that uh, target. Say that could be any user who's completed their profile can will exit the journey automatically. And that will happen at different stages, but the beauty of it is it will be personal to that single user. It's just that the setup for you as a marketer using OneSignal journeys is very, very simple um, and streamlined. So we have one more question here. Which OneSignal services do you see improve engagement and, and conversions based on segmentation? text, email, in-app, et cetera. I understand each has its own use case, but looking to understand from a hospitality standpoint. Okay, so it's, uh, it's always important to understand your, your industry, and it's hard to give a single, single recommendation on, on what tends to work. I think just doing something and having a structure in place is already going to give you going to maximize your chances to have a have someone re-engage with you or a reminder of um, a reminder of a particular booking that they have so just having that in place in the first place uh, whether that's a push whether it's an email and just have that automated in the background is is going to depend on the user always but just having something that that you can set up, that you can monitor and just understand the, the effectiveness of. So for example, it's hard for me to give you a single channel or a single message that tends to work for you, but you can use one signal to A, B test different, um, different messages and understand the performance of those over time. So as we talked about earlier, it's all about testing and optimizing and seeing what resonates with you. So yeah, with one signal, you can cast a wide net and over time you'll be able to see which resonates with the others, where during the journey do you notice those sticking points or fall off points and what can you do to kind of step in to, to resolve those issues. And one very simple, yet effective way of doing this is incorporating in-app messages to survey the user at different parts of, of their journey. So you can use in-app messages to create very simple um, questions um, on how their experience has been, maybe even how they prefer to be, to be contacted, whether that's via text or email. And you can tag the user accordingly, depending on their response, and then have that personalized tag to that particular user, which means you can then create another segment that will target those users exactly how they want. So yeah, it's it's com it's complex, but it's also you need to try to think um, think which which tools do I have at my disposal, and how can I test and optimize this over time. So. We have a couple more questions here, um, but let's see. So here's a question. Can you group certain types of messages or message in certain stages by certain channel based on stats in the field? Um, I'm not sure I quite understand this one. If you could, if you could elaborate maybe a little bit on what you mean, um, that would be really helpful. But you can certainly, um, you can certainly send messages and um, segment based off of the device type, and each user who, as they register with you, will have a channel uh, that's associated with them. So automatically you will know how to reach them and uh, maybe even encourage those users who may not have subscribed to your email or may have 
um, may have not given them your phone number yet. There are ways you could communicate that and encourage them to, hey, maybe if you opt into more such as email, uh, you could do so uh, using those other channels to, to gain even more real estate, if you will, on the other ones. So we have a couple of more questions here, but I'm going to take one last one. Um, how do journeys handle edge cases like users re-entering a journey after completion? That's a very good question. So you have a setting in OneSignal journeys where you can decide this user can only receive this or fall into this journey once, or they could receive it again, but only after a certain amount of time. So re-engagement is a very common example here. So you may have a user who've been inactive for say seven days, and after seven days or three days, um, it, it's all up to you how you want to define that. Um, you wanna start sending them messages like, hey, we, we miss you, or here's a promo code to get you to get them enticed to open up the app again. And you can keep this as long as you want. I've seen some re-engagement journeys and retention journeys that have lasted almost like a year in total. Uh, <laughs> so there's, you, you don't ever have to stop because there will always be those users who are super sticky. Although obviously that probably over time, uh, the effectiveness will fall. But the whole point is um, you can decide. So me as a user, if I've been in, active in an app, in a fitness app, for example, um, which does happen, um, where um, I've been inactive and I get a message that from a journey that gets me to get back in, it's like, yeah, then I get active again. I use the app for another two, three weeks, but then I fall inactive. I can fall into that same journey if I want to, if the messaging is like relevant or generic enough, or you can even add a tag being like, hey, this user has already gone through my original re-engagement journey. So I want to, I want them for the second time to fall into a different one. So you have that flexibility to decide whether they fall into, whether they can only receive a journey once or after a certain period of time. So we can follow up directly with any more questions um, for all the ones that we were not able to answer live. But with that, I wish you guys uh, the best of luck with, uh, with uh, kicking off or continuing to develop your, uh, your segmentation and personalization strategies. And a reminder to check out our data tags webinar. If you search on YouTube or in our resources on onesignal.com, you will find that. And lastly, our documentation center in OneSignal is incredibly um, is incredibly useful. It just has endless documentation and guides for different use cases, and and yeah, just creates a, uh, contains a lot of great great stuff. All right. Thank you so much for listening. I, I hope it's been I hope it's been insightful and that you've learned something today, no matter where you are in your journey. And yeah, uh, see you guys around. Appreciate it.